Well, hello, good evening. Uh, welcome to the Guild Room of the Guild of St Eloy Model Railway Club. OK, uh, here we are in Azay Le Ferrand, an Englishman playing with trains. Um, what I'm about to do is not going to teach people who know anything very much at all. It, I'm just going to show you a few things, or I'm going to show you one thing. Uh, I desperately need to create a bit of an inventory and get my Hornby Dublo stuff listed and worked out what I've got and maybe make some of it work. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, little by little, one at a time. And tonight I'm going to have a look at an engine that I haven't actually touched since I got it. Now there are experts who know everything there is to know, or if they don't they've got the book that tells them everything that they need to know. In the 1930s, 1950s and 60s, Hornby, uh, which was part of Meccano made a range of model railway stuff known as Hornby Dublo and it came in these jolly nice boxes and clever people will be able to say by the style of the box when that was made when it was sold and not only will they tell you that and I have to confess I don't know um, I'm sure someone will enlighten us uh, there's boxes like that, and then there's boxes like this. And on the end of the box it tells us that it's a Hornby Dublo EDL7 locomotive. A tank locomotive. And as you can see it's in several different languages. And the box, or the label, was printed in England and prime en Angleterre. Wonderful. Now, if we turn this box round the other end, this is where some people, enthusiasts, will get all excitable. And they'll say, look at that. Is that five shillings and a penny? Or 57 shillings? 51 shillings, I don't know. Um, but it's got a little sticker on the end there that says LMS. Now the English Model Railway fans will tell you that LMS is the London, Midland and Scottish Railway. And they'll all get excited and they'll say, look at that, that box tells us it was made in such and such a year. And yeah, OK. Sadly, what's in the box isn't what the box says because what's in the box is an EDL7 tank engine but very much in British rail colours some people will say well it's it's a gloss uh, these came in various different finishes and this one is in quite a nice high gloss. Now if we take it out of the box the first thing that modern model railway people will find about this is it's heavy. It's a die cast body. It's metal and it's chunky and it is equipped for running on a three rail system. Now with these particular uh, range of things the wheels and the chassis is all in effect common um, current is picked up from the outside rails by the wheels and it's picked up from the center rail by this little pickup now some enthusiasts are going to insist that we look at the front buffer beam. 
I don't pretend to know, uh, but that buffer beam tells us something about when this particular engine was was made. And it's in fairly nice condition, isn't it? I would suggest that it hasn't been restored, it hasn't been hasn't been knocked about too badly either. And on the back of it it's got the little Hornby transfer. No coal in the tender. Well, okay, they didn't. Uh, that was a sort of aftermarket thing, or some of the later ones, I believe, had coal. And the wheel arrangement on this is described as 062, because it hasn't got any sort of leading pony wheels. It has got six wheels. Now the full size one the centre wheel would have had a flange but when you start making if you like toys that go around tight radius curves they work better with flangeless wheels. Then it's got this little trailing bogey with two wheels so in British parlance it's an O because it hasn't got a front pony, six driven wheels and two trailing wheels. Tank engine, so that is what you get, that's the whole thing, it doesn't have a tender behind for the coal and water, it just has tanks either side and coal in the rear. Uh, very nice chunky sort of thing. Probably this is the locomotive that started an awful lot of boys, an awful lot of people in their model railway. Um, can you call it a career? But there we are. Um, nice little thing. Now what we're going to do, we're going to cheat a little bit because Hornby made this wonderful sort of device that you you plonk your engine or your coach or wagon or whatever and you slide it down that and it allows you to drop it onto the track as it should be. Now, this particular engine, I did very quickly just apply power to see whether it did anything, and it didn't. Which, you know, shame, but to be expected. And obviously as a running engine, it's much more interesting than as, as, a, as a dead one. So I'd quite like to see if we can make this run. I don't think I'm going to succeed tonight because I haven't got all of the tools that I need here in France. Um, I've got a magnetizer, which I am sure this engine would like, uh, but that's still in a shed in England. Oh well. Anyway, the first thing is to separate the chassis from the, the body. And on these, there's a little screw that goes through um, the front, uh, just behind the uh, front buffer beam. And that screw goes into that little plate, which has got a little spring on it for the coupling. And, well, well, we'll undo that. I'm going to put you down while I do it, but word to people who've never done this, make sure you do it over the top of something, because if you drop it in the carpet, you know, be a irritator to try and find it again. So I'm going to pop that screw out and we'll have a look at the chassis in a moment. 
Well, there's the uh, uh, the screw and the front coupling. I'm going to pop that over there where I'm not going to knock it on the floor. The body comes off quite easily. Once you've got that screw out, it, it just sort of, the front drops out and you ease it forward because the two lugs in the back of the, the body go in those two grooves there. Now, when you look at these, it is so different to so many um, much more modern trains because it's got this wonderful chunky sort of motor in effect the whole thing is a motor the body holds the brushes for the commutator it's got this big magnet oh, compared to some motors a big magnet and it's engineered this isn't um this isn't a plastic throwaway job. This is this is an engineered piece of equipment. That little screw there, with the hole down the middle of it, is the top bearing for the motor, for the armature, which has got a lock nut. And you can adjust it. You can adjust the end float on the motor. How about that? Now, a lot of folk will mutter things. Now, there's a problem. Hmm. No wonder it didn't seem to want to do anything. There should be a little plug in there that pushes down on a spring, which pushes the brush onto the commutator, and it hasn't got one. It's sort of got a bit of wire pushed in there. That's that's not at all right. Hmm, okay. I shall tease that out in a moment. What I am going to do, I'm going to pull the magnet off, I'm going to take the brushes out, and I'm going to take the armature out because the first thing I want to know is whether the chassis runs nicely and every time you take the magnet off the clever people say you should remagnetize it a lot of the clever people say you shouldn't take the magnet off well to take the armature out the magnet has got to come off so I'm going to uh, then we can do some do some basic little looking at it and testing. Well, yes, that is just not the right way for giving power to, to the brush. One thing that I've noticed straight away with this, the brushes should sort of slide out of the tubes. They probably, the tubes are probably very gummed up with carbon and oil and muck. But having taken the springs out, there's the springs and one plug. I'm going to need to scratch around and see if I've got a, uh, another plug. Actually, haha, he said, look at that. I have got a scrap chassis that has got a plug on it. How about that? That's a good thing, isn't it? So we can rectify that little problem without too much trouble. Uh, some of you are going to say, no, you can't, you can't scrap. I don't know, is that a city chassis? I can scrap it because it, it was never a complete locomotive. It was given to me as a source of spares so yeah we can we can rectify that problem the 
the other thing that I probably already knew, if you look at this little screw here, my experience is when the motor is adjusted properly, that is sort of flush with the top of the uh, top of that casting. Generally, not always, but generally. And when I push the wheels, if you watch the armature, I think that's too much end float, a lot too much. I think. I think. Someone else might have a different opinion. Um, so right, I'm going to pop the magnet off. It's a simple fitting that goes through. Brass. So it doesn't, uh, doesn't sort of... <coughs> oh, excuse me, I sneezed. Does that mean I'm now banned from travel? Shame. Um, yeah, brass so that it doesn't uh, allow the magnetism to sort of flow. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take the magnet off. Okay, that's the magnet off. I've put the keeper plates back on. Uh, simple test. It's got some life in it. I think it would benefit from remagnetizing. I think uh, that's not going to happen until I've been back to England. Ah, dear. Right. The armature will come out. And very simple method for taking the armature out is you unscrew that, pull that out, and... There's a groove in the top block of the casting that allows you to slide the armature towards us. But in that top bearing is a tiny little ball bearing. And in the bottom bearing, in there, is another tiny little ball bearing. And you need to make sure that your workspace is set up so that when you take that out and the ball bearing drops out, it doesn't go on the floor because something I'm not going to be doing is chasing ball bearings all over the floor. So one of the tricks is to do it with the chassis on its side so that the ball bearing doesn't fall out. A better trick is actually to do it over a tray. Well there's the armature. The armatures for these have, they came with two different pitches on the worm. Uh, I've, I think, just by looking at it, I think that's a coarse worm. Um, again, I'm, I'm confident that a, a clever person will correct me on that. Um, uh, I think that looks like a coarse one. Uh, if I had another one lying about, we could have a look. Uh, this one is dead. I've, when I need it, I'm going to have to have it rewound. Uh, but yeah, so that's a coarse one. We're going to pop that to one side with the lock nut, with the top bearing, with the little ball. Oh yeah. Oh dear. How do you show a ball in a? Well, trust me. There's a ball in there. And there's a ball in the bottom bearing as well. But the first thing I'm going to look at is just to see how well the chassis behaves. Because it doesn't matter 
whether the motor works or not, if the chassis isn't right, nothing's going to happen. That seems okay. I think that would improve with a bit of cleaning and lubricating. I think. There's no rough spots. And why would there be? This is a simple um, motor. You know, when you look, let's look at this scrap chassis. You know, there's lots of movie sort of bits that can catch and bend and, 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 and such likes. But these little 062s, they are simple and robust. Nothing much wrong with that, is there? I've over-oiled it. I'm going to have to uh, going to have to go over this with some tissue and mop some of the oil out of it. But you know, we do these things. Now, one of the things that I've always always done, often done with these, if you look, there are tubes that the brushes and springs go in. Now, in my dim distant past, I used to get shouted at a lot and I had to open the butt trap on Lee Enfield number fours and take out the pull through and the oil bottle and, and Put a pull through through the through the barrel, and then you hold it up to the light, and you can see it all nice and clean. Um, these don't come with oil bottles and pull throughs in the butt trap, sadly. Now, where are we? Oh, excuse me. I normally would use. A nice delicate little Q-tip, but I haven't got any here. Ha! And what I have got is these wonderful electricians cleaning jobby things. That ain't going to go in there. So we'll pull most of the cotton off that. most, not all. Yeah, a mixture of carbon and oil and muck. Uh, those tubes want to be nice and clean and they want to allow the brushes and the springs to slide about. Now what you will all be giggling at is I hadn't extracted the brushes. They were still in there. Um, Not very big, are they? Really need tweezers to pop them in. But there we are, they're out. Now, I'm going to get a little bit technical because what we want to know is we want to know that there's no reason for this not to work once we've sorted out this little problem with it. So I'm going to just check some continuity. As I say, the wheels should all be common. 
they should conduct. Yep, and my little meter is telling me that that's fine, and that's fine, and that's fine. Ah. And that's fine. That's good. That's good because, of course, that one is insulated. But yes, I've got good continuity. No problems with that. So, let's have a little look at the armature. Ah, the meter tells me there's nothing wrong with that. Let's check it on the ohms and see that the resistance is futile. Uh, this all gets a bit fingers and thummy, doesn't it? Well that's good, the meter is telling me that there's nothing wrong with that. That's actually rather pleasing. Uh, actually that's very pleasing. So what we're going to do before we put it back together is I'm going to clean the wheels, I'm going to take some of the excess oil off it. Uh, I'm going to... Pop that off there. That's soldered in, isn't it? Of course it's soldered in. Um, right, I'm not going to pop that off there and fit it on there tonight because my soldering iron isn't upstairs here. Tomorrow night I know where my soldering iron is, it's it's down in my other toolbox and yeah, I will I will deal with that tomorrow. But there we are. That is a little look we might call that part one of looking at this engine. We might, as that is seemingly fine we might be able to get this to do something tomorrow mm, I think the magnet is a little bit on the weak side but we might be able to get this to run yeah I've just looked at the time ha! <laughs> oh boy this, this is why you shouldn't have hobbies um, the time has got away from me tonight and I've got a busy work program tomorrow so yeah we'll leave that locomotive where it is and we'll see what happens tomorrow <laughs>